Suzette Meyer. And there was the moment and the reaction as the winner's name was announced. The winner of the 2022 Scotiabank Giller Prize, the recipient of that $100,000 check. Great fanfare in Toronto last night for that book, The Sleeping Car Porter, and the author, Suzette Meyer. Who is my guest this morning? It's become a bit of a tradition. I get the great pleasure of talking to the Giller winner every year, and Suzette is, is this year's and therefore with me today. Good morning. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to be here. Let's Thank you. see that big smile. And I want to hear, first of all, about the celebrations last night. Tell me all about the party, Suzette. Oh, boy. There are a lot of interviews, a lot of uh, flashing Photo photographers, and then afterwards there was just a great big party um, in the Four Seasons, and we just drank and danced and danced and danced. It was it was amazing. Well, you deserve to kick up your heels after all of that. Uh, I want to talk about this moment. I'm playing right now, and I know you can't see on the on the monitor there as you speak to me, but you can hear the moment that your name was announced. It's always so impactful and so emotional. It's been my experience talking to previous winners. As you heard your name, who or what were you thinking of in that moment? I actually couldn't hear my name. I just heard a bunch of letters, and I didn't realize it was me until I actually heard the uh, title of the book. And I think the second I heard the title of the book, I thought of my main character, Baxter, the sleeping car porter. That's the title of the book, and so he's immediately who I thought of. And then. And then I thought, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I hugged my partner. I hugged Elena Wilcox, my um, publisher. And Elena told me, you, ha you have to go up on the stage now. So, but I was thinking about my character, honestly. It was character, a strange moment. Character of Baxter, uh, the sleeping car porter. This mm -hmm. goes back to the 1920s. He's a queer black porter on the train, but he wants to save his money to go to dental school. What is it about your mm -hmm. what that character that, was, that is so compelling that you were thinking of? last night? I think it's because it took so long to find him. You know, so when I was doing research for this book, it was hard enough doing, you know, to find evidence of sleeping car porters day to day lives. It was hard enough trying to find a queer sleeping car porter or just queer men from the 1920s in the first place. And so he's become, it sounds ridiculous, but he's become kind of a real person to me, you know, and he sort of is representative of all kinds of people who um, are queer but can't come out and have to hide their sexuality, um, have to hide their lives, and uh, you know, and this is him getting the spotlight. So it, it just felt really amazing. Isn't that amazing? Um, no wonder he's become real to you. He's been part of your life for, <clears throat> well, a third of your life, not, not quite a third, but for 19 years, people need to know this, yeah. that exhaustive research and preparation. This was a novel you worked on for 19 years, not exclusively, but for all of that length of time. What is it about the story and that character that kept you so engaged all that time, Suzette? I guess it was about, you know, trying to figure out where I fit and people like me, where we fit in terms of Canada's history. So as a black person, as a queer person, um, you know, it was me kind of going through the archives and trying to find grandparents and great grandparents and, and great uncles, you know, trying to figure out where I where I fit and uh, who I am. And it was also a book that, you know, was about a topic that I hadn't seen anywhere. I wanted to see a book about black joy. I wanted to see a happy ending for for a, a black person, for a queer person. And so I thought, I'm going to do that book. I'm going to write that book. So, so that's interesting. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that because you said to Eli last night, uh, this was part of your own search for identity, for ancestral queer family as well, even in telling mm -hmm. this story. So is somebody that became so real to you over such a long time, I mean, what did you do when you got to the end after 19 years and you had to say goodbye <laughs> to this story and goodbye to Baxter and write like the end, I guess? I, you know... At that point, I was kind of sick of him, <laughs> so <laughs> it was okay. It was okay. It's like, okay, fly away, fly away, be, you know, belong to other people, which is sort of what happens when, you know, you write a book or when I write a book is you work on something for such a really long time and, you know, at a certain point you realize, okay, you've got to let it go and you have to give it to the world and the world is going to do with it what 
what it's going to do with it, you know. But and that's part of the act of writing for me. It's, that's what out publication is all about. It's a very strange kind of need to, you know. It's not just about writing the book. It's also okay. Now I have to put it out in the world and and give it away. So it's it's bittersweet. Well, we know what's going to happen now that it's out in the world because with the Giller Prize always comes that Giller effect, that bump in sales. So more and more people are going to discover your, your character of Baxter and, and discover this history that you have um, brought uh, to publication. In terms of impact, yes, there'll be sales. Yes, there's that check. I don't even know if you think if you've, you've allowed your thoughts to turn to that big that paycheck. But what do you think the impact's going to be, Suzette? Well, for you mean for me or yes, for the world or for you? Well, for both, oh. whatever, broadly. Yeah, well, for me, I mean, this is my sixth book, um, and so you know, I've been I've been working for a while, and I have to say, I have had my down moments where I've kind of wondered, you know, am I doing the right thing? Are people even interested in what I have to say? And so, you know, I've been talking a couple to a couple people about um, how it's great for getting rid of my imposter syndrome. I now feel a, a lot less like a fraud as a writer, you know, or as a hobbyist. So it, it's making me take myself seriously. I hope that, it, you know, it being in the world for people who are maybe less accepting of queer people, um, that maybe it can help give them a bit more uh, sense of compassion, you know. And then for queer people, it's like, you know, here's a happy ending. Here's a happy story. It's got struggles, but and it's like it it turns out okay which i think is really important it's important for us to see stories of ourselves where it's going to be okay it's turned out as a beautiful happy ending for you with this forever giller prize winner no more imposter syndrome my goodness suzette giller prize winner suzette meyer 22 uh, award winner thank you for the time today really a pleasure and again congratulations thank you thank you so much